in a world. Welcome to the stream. Is Trump the chosen one? Let's get it. Hopefully the, the audio is pretty good. I think that it was kind of low, but I think we should be good now. So how's it going? I pushed it back because my boy Shane was debating debating Ozian on Jaren's channel. So showed them some love. Shout out to my boy Shane. I'm glad he's jumping on these debates. Very smart dude. All right. You guys give me audio feedback. I'll mess with the mixer uh, if I need to. Someone says five five by five all right so tonight's stream is called is trump the chosen one um during this stream we do have a goal right there uh for those that don't know i'm going to la to jump on the tinfoil hot hat podcast with sam tripoli that's on the 17th coincidentally i would say it's not a coincidence that's when jaron had this meeting uh scheduled for a really long time where people are a bunch of truthers are going to meet up and try to make long distance observations over the course of a couple days uh see the silhouette of a mountain and a few other things um in cali so i'm going to try to go out there a day early and meet up with them and then do the podcast on the 17th and then fly back on the 18th of course, it is like a five and a half hour flight both ways, uh, three hour difference. Um, so it's going to be quite a bit because I think their location is going to be three hours away from LA. So I'm going to have to fly out real early in the morning, get there, rent a car, drive a, over three hours there, and then I'll have to drive three hours back to LA and then take the five hour flight back. So it's going to be a lot. But we do have like a goal to help fund that trip. 
of course, uh, you know, the plane tickets, hotels, rental car, gas, etc. So if you guys feel inclined to help your boy get out there to the Tinfoil Hat podcast, it's greatly appreciated. If you donate at Kofi.com slash Witsit, your message will pop up on the screen. It'll automatically go towards the goal, um, which I actually set a little bit low based on the numbers that I've seen, but I wanted the triple sevens. All right, cool. Um, and it's pretty crazy because the InfoWars thing is supposed to be coming up, and I think they just contacted me, and they were asking about like that very date, of course. It's pretty crazy, but um, that'll be coming soon as well. So the name of the stream, again, is Is Trump the Chosen One? Now, I could have made a more uh, like specific like subject specific title but i <laughs> it may have gotten flagged to be honest um depending on how it goes i think i might can walk the tightrope pretty good on the stream but depending on how it goes we may pop over to rumble and rockfin um as i play the first video i'll update the links there but here is the rumble uh link i'm dropping in the youtube chat now and then I'll drop it in the description as well. And then I'll also drop Rockfin. And I will say, um, on a quick note here, uh, it's crazy. Rockfin's been more reliable than Rumble, who obviously has much more funding, much more clout, um, whatever. But So there's Rumble in the description. And then let me grab the Rockfin as well. And then we'll, pop, we'll go ahead and get started. So yeah, because like say I, when I do a controversial stream, it's usually about Zionism. What's so crazy is even Rumble starts glitching out and people start sending me screen recordings and it's like the screen goes green. So it's not like a broadcasting issue, a OBS issue or whatever. People recording me their whole screen just glitching and going green and pretty weird. But every time that happens, controversial stream, Rockfin, no problems. It's just running smooth, so pretty interesting. Uh, let me just drop this in here. Okay. So we now have both of the... Um, we got both of those links in the description, so uh, I'll give you guys a heads up if we do need to move over, and then we'll be able to talk uncensored there. But shout out to Witness. Thank you for the $50 donation towards the goal. Much love. There's a couple more. I'll read them off in just a second as well. I'll periodically check the donations uh, throughout the stream. Now, let's kind of get into this. If you aren't new to this channel, back in the day, I used to have like really raw content, and my content's still very raw. I do want to kind of like up it a bit, up the quality a bit. A raw and I just kind of press the button and, and start going right but back in the day it was way more raw I would work um, I ran a detail business I'd work all day I'd come home um, you know spend like a few hours right off after work uh, on putting together these streams different subjects and then I'd just uh, go live in my living room and I covered the Trump subject back then um, and I and it was like is Trump the Antichrist? I have a stream I think still on my channel called "Is Trump the Antichrist," uh, and needless to say, a lot of people got triggered. Uh, Tim, excited for your trip to Cali. Thank you so much for the five dollars. Um, so now you know that of course Trump has looked up and said that he was the chosen one. He literally said, "I am the chosen one," and looked up. Very generous fifty dollar donation from Sam towards the goal. Thank you so much, man. Um, okay, but chosen one anointed is is the translation of messiah or moshiach mashiach right in hebrew meaning the messiah um pretty crazy he said he was the chosen one and we're going to get into this but it's pretty interesting there's a group of people um they're very zealous they got a lot of huspa. Uh, think of the twenty dollars from Heracles. Twenty twenty four is the year. I know, dude. Absolutely. Second half of twenty twenty four is gonna be crazy. Mark my words. It's actually gonna start this month. It's gonna be a cascading effect for True Earth. Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, there's a zealous group of people that want to bring about what they call a Messiah, and they believe it'll be a political leader that takes over the world. Literally, that's what they think. They think that there will be a 
political leader that takes over the entire world, kind of puts them in charge, and that uh, people that aren't in their group will basically be subservient to them and will be their slaves even. Uh, there's an extremist group of people that think that. And what's so crazy is Trump has direct ties to this secular foreign state, nation state, uh, named Israel, that has a lot of pull in our country. A lot of pull in our country, right? I mean, we have dual citizens, and of course, we just back-to-back -back last year's streams covered Zionism. Adam and I ended up talking more about the historicity of Jesus. Um, but anyway, so now, a lot of people like Trump. Um, and the reasoning for it is pretty simple. I'm gonna, this is my disclaimer, right? Like trigger warning. Um, thank you, uh, Jaron, nice, dude. Uh, I don't know if, it's, if it is the Jaron, but stoked you'll be on tinfoil hat. Hope to see you when you are out here. Yeah, it is Jaron. Thank you for the uh, donation, brother, towards the goal. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna make that happen, man. Oh, wow, very generous donation. 200 from Richard B. Have a great time in LA. Here's a little food money. Much love to Kai and fam. Thank you so much, brother. Very, very generous. Can't thank you enough. I'll go back through the donations too. I don't want to. They're still popping up. I may have to just pause and read them all. But thank you, James, as well. I'm going to read them all in a, in a moment. We'll do it. We'll have periodic breaks where we read them so I don't keep losing my uh, train of thought. So, but th thank you, everyone that's supporting. All right. Uh, People love Trump, right? And I fell for the Trump thing in like 2015, 16. And the reason why was because uh, I got caught up in the same spell that's still tricking people. And that is, look at how stupid the other side, th these group of people that hate on him are, right? Um, and he was saying things that you wanna hear. Like he was tickling your ears, basically. Calling out the Federal Reserve, calling out uh, corruption within politics and the corruption of politicians. and um saying america first what's up with all these these foreign entities and and these people selling out our country um just very basic things right claiming he was going to put hillary clinton in jail I and mean, all, all this stuff and um that's why he got so popular people were so thirsty for someone to come up there and kind of say what you wanted to hear even just a little bit even the stuff that trump said i mean all the promises he said and didn't actually fulfill uh they were nothing really if you think it what what a OG president would say like if you got if you got a top tier truther up there in office which um anyone that wants to be president shouldn't be president is kind of how i feel about that but leaders should be chosen by um the people and shouldn't really want to be in a certain situations but to not digress too much uh i fell for it i was debating them you know like trump didn't say that oh trump's racist and he said all mexicans are rapists i'm like he didn't say that and um, it's a it's a good trick because you start correcting the slander, the libel, the misinformation, and you get caught up in these people that are kind of like psychotic, and they have like Trump derangement syndrome, and they just start being insane people, hating on him, and you're like, bro, like, if I'm it, whatever puts me on the other side from that side, then we're good. And he was smart, and he went he he went the conservative angle. So I get it. I get that he did a lot of things if we believe in politics for a second, right? Uh, economically for the country, he said a lot of the right things, blah, blah, blah. I will say uh, there's not one uh, person allegedly running for president that is uh, pro-life. So you see what's happening is Trump is actually moving the pendulum over to where the new, the new conservative is the old liberal. Now, these are all labels, two wings to the same bird. I don't want to digress too much because we got some serious gravy to get into here. Um, the point is that there's this thing about Trump. He's sold as like the only hope that we have. And if he's not legit, then we're screwed. And I mean, entire movements like the Q movement have, uh, you know, been spun off of that. And you have this idea of the White Hats and, and Trump playing 4D chess. And everything he's saying is not actually just like this surface level way to move a crowd. It's actually like incredibly high level intellectual chess. And he's giving us pieces of breadcrumbs and uh, you know this masterful display of intellect and wittiness and stuff like that um and i, I frankly respectfully I, I think that that is delusion okay let's just call it like it is bro trump was the president 
when the entire world shut down in unison as if it was a single country. Trump was the president when in America, uh, we were told to stay in our house and we were given terms such as lockdown, which is a prison term. Trump was the president uh, that actually pushed out and normalized genetic modification. So when you really step back and think about it, not only is that dude not your friend, he did some of the most egregious attacks on freedoms to ever take place in this country. It's not even close. No. I think it's a little bit deeper than this. I think that um, Trump is an extreme threat, and I'm going to show you why. So um, it spins off of the most recent uh, stream I did. And let me pop over to intermission. And then we'll go here first. All right, I don't actually have that set up yet. Let me just, all right. Now here's a few things you might need to know about Trump that you might not know. So there's something called the tipple coin and it's got Trump on it. This is a coin printed by Israel. Pretty interesting stuff there, huh? So it has him here beside King Cyrus. This is the guy in the scriptures that uh, demanded a temple was built. Okay. And it's got him beside Trump. And of course, Trump moved the embassy the U.S. Embassy for Israel. Of course, if you don't know, America has locations in different countries. We have one in Israel. Of course, we do. Because that's basically, that's the actual capital, not D.C. Um, they moved the temple to Jerusalem. Very significant in this realm of Abrahamic religions. And uh, on the back here, you have the temple. It's called the Temple Coin. So tr they're, they're associating Trump with uh, the building of the third temple. Now, that actually isn't the only coin that they printed of him. I don't see another, the other one, but there's actually another one. Okay, so this is pretty interesting, right? I mean, they printed this guy on a coin. So, if if you know anything about the third temple, the idea is that the third temple must be built. There must be a specific altar. They're going to bring back specific blood sacrifices of animals for the first time in like 2000 years. And there's supposed to be these red heifers that are prophetic that can't have one blemish on them. And they have to be within a certain age and they're going to sacrifice them and it will bring about the Messiah. And uh, they've been recently received these red heifers uh, from a, uh, a rancher in Texas, he actually jumped on a conversation. He had a conversation with Stu Peters um, and then my boy King Val. He was in the Level documentary. Uh, and they kind of discussed it and the guy's like, lost the plot, modern Christian Zionism, doesn't read the book for himself. And uh, it's kind of crazy uh, where we are in the realm of these things. Whether you think it's real or fake, like these people don't just think it's real, they take it very, very seriously, right? All right, so let's kind of get into the gravy. Let's just fast forward to it, right? Um, Trump is the most pro-Israel president that we've ever had. It's not even close. And it's such a coincidence because I randomly decided, like, oh, I want to cover this, but people don't know. And people still don't know exactly what I'm about to show them, and it's crazy. I'm like, I bet people still don't even really know um, what all's going on. And I randomly looked up. I was trying to look for a picture that would work for the, the thumbnail, and I looked up. Trump J and look what pops up in the news today Trump says Jewish Americans who vote for Biden don't love Israel and should be spoken to and I'm sure you know it, someone's like oh but you're taking what he said out of context because they do that on purpose a Galen dialectic but an anti-semitic tropes Jewish groups criticize Donald Trump's comments Trump says Jews who vote for Biden do not love Israel over and over and over, right? 
okay, what a coincidence. So I took that as a confirmation that we should be doing the stream. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're, uh, I'm trying to think, is this video gonna get me in trouble, man? It may, it may, we may actually have to move off of here. Mm, I don't know. We have a couple options. Option A, I can play it, and if I start to realize, like, oh, this will get taken down, I can move us off and then just delete the YouTube or not. Let me let me just cover a few more things before we do that. I think that might get us taken down. So Trump moved the embassy to Jerusalem. He was printed on the coin. He brags about being the most pro-Israel uh, president ever. He literally just said that, like, if you don't vote for him, you're not you're you're uh, Jews who don't vote for him. Um, don't love Israel and need to be spoken to, apparently. Uh, he was recently given what's called the Torah Award. And we're going to get into all of that. He, he, If you just go look up Trump Awards, you'll see that it's a bunch of, a bunch of uh, Israeli awards um, and Jewish awards. And they love that guy. They love him. And he admits he's like the most pro-Israel president ever. Now, if you know anything about current geopolitical events, Israel is right in the mix of it. Um, and how you know politics being fake doesn't actually equate to nothing being real what i'm saying is this is high level sorcery and black magic they need compliance of people they need the consciousness the collective consciousness of people to buy into certain things to believe certain things to support certain things for it to be successful and even if you take out the woo woo aspect of the magic it's not woo woo Jaron talks about like home field advantage a lot. That's obviously very real. I've manifested many things in my life. I know that it's real. Um, collective consciousness, it, as in like a group of people all concentrating and believing on the same thing, very powerful. Even the scriptures tell you about that. Uh, everyone in here has probably actually had experiential uh, testimony that would that would uh, support that. But my point here being that they uh, they need you to kind of feel a certain way, even if you took that that uh, metaphysical aspect out of it out. Oh man, let me switch headphones. Even if you take the metaphysical aspect of it out, it's like if politics were fake, but you wanted people to think that they're real, you're, you're gonna basically play, have a play for everyone to see. But you still need, um, you still need people to think it's legit. Right, because once it starts happening, they'll be like, wait, how is this happening? No one wanted this to happen. Okay, so not to digress too much. It's important exactly what the collective consciousness is. It is, even though politics are fake. It's very, very important. Israel is on the table for discussion by everyone right now. And it's, of course, because they are wiping out the Gaza Strip. Just, just wiping it out. It's insane to watch. I actually don't encourage you to watch it too much. Uh, let me find. Boom. Okay, should be good. Let me play this. So you, so you did not inject GP1 by GP1? Okay. That's the video I think will get us in trouble. All right. So this is the real question, right? How does Israel or Zionists feel about Trump in relation to their prophecies? I think you may be surprised that there are very respected and prominent people within that circle that consider him the Messiah. That is insane. Okay, and we're about to cover some of that, but you'll be like, how could he be the Messiah? He's not even Jewish. Well, first of all, some of them, the scholars even dispute uh, if he just does something for the Jewish people or if he is technically Jewish, I think he does pretty point blank say he needs to come from David. Uh, some argue that, wait, wait a minute, how sure are we of Trump's genetics? And it's this, this whole rabbit hole. So put the is he Jewish question to the side, right? The point is that there are rabbis that uh, just gave him a very important award. And that award's only supposed to go to the Messiah. So what I'm going to do to refresh everyone's memory of how they feel about us is I'm, I'm going to play this video, which we should be fine here. It's just a bunch of rabbis talking. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just playing what they say. Let's watch this video in case you're not familiar with it. And then we'll keep going. I think we're good. It's so crazy. I mean, like, I think we're, we clearly do have to move over again. 
to finish the stream. Like I have no choice. I know it sucks. It's so convenient for everyone to listen to it. Now here, people don't want to move, but what can we do? I think this is an important stream. If you're really falling for the Trump thing, you need to step back and think about what we're, what we're talking about. It's very important. I will go ahead and list these things off. I mean, Trump built out by the Rothschilds, uh, for an insane amount of money with a sweetheart deal when he was uh, going bankrupt with the casino bailed out by the Rothschilds with a sweetheart deal tree of life award brags about it says it's his, his, uh, the award he's most proud of. Hey, of course, you know, he stays in the 66th floor of his pen and of his penthouse suite, um, of his penthouse and in the penthouse suite. Uh, you go in there, you have the as above, so below symbolism, the two Gnostic towers, you have fallen angels carrying women, you have very, very occultic, Gnostic, satanic symbology. Um, that award was crazy. He was given an award last year and this year that are very, very, very important. Um, we're going to get into it. I may just take the chance and play the video, but like, I, just, I don't know if it's worth it. I wonder if I play the video, if I could like, I mean, be like, oh, if I just commentate that I disagree with what he said in certain parts, right? I don't know how that works. All right. Let's check it out. Sorry, just a second. All right, so we did play this last time, but I think that this is very important context to know. Um, they believe that Edom will be destroyed. Edom was Rome. Rome is turned into the Christian religion in any civilization that is dominated or predominantly um, Christian or was founded via quote unquote Christianity coming from Catholicism is Edom. Uh, is evil and will be destroyed and that they will have power until their Messiah comes. And so they actually uh, expect and prophesize and predict the fall of the Western world. They associate that with the coming of the Messiah. So let's play this video. I'll check the donations. And then we may have to move over. I don't know. Okay. Well, I played this last time, but I should be able to just play this here. So uh, let's check it out. Edom is Christendom. It is the implacable enemy of the Jewish people. The concept of Esau, uh, as uh, Esau, as Edom and as Rome, was changed, transformed into a religion. So therefore, any any nation that has that religion can be considered Esau. See, so therefore, it's not one nation that is now two thousand years or whatever, but it is a religion. And any nation that has that religion, predominantly, is called Asaph. Christianity, of course, ultimately became Western civilization. So Asaph today is really Western civilization. Because Western civilization is basically Christian. And therefore, that is considered uh, to be uh, Asaph. Asaph, who became Edom, who became the Roman Empire, which metamorphosed into the Christian Empire, which became Christian civilization, which is now represented by the United States of America, will suffer a crushing, humiliating defeat. Esau um, is everything that's wicked in the world, and it's the f Edom, Esau, Esau is Edom. It's the final kingdom of the four kingdoms. It's the greatest, the most implacable enemy of the Jewish people. Prophesy, we have whole books devoted to the destruction of Edom at the end of the days, this is the last kingdom. In traditional Jewish thinking, it's the church. It's the implacable enemy of the Jews. It's a morphing kingdom. It's unlike the previous kingdoms. It begins as Rome, and then it morphs, becomes Christian in the fourth century, and then it divides and divides and divides. So who's Edom? Edom includes most of Europe. It includes the United States of America. It's the Roman Empire that never was never destroyed. Edom becomes America. Why? Because it, America is Edom, after all. Esau, who in modern day terms is really basically, uh, you know, uh, certainly one of them is, is, is America. But for those who, who don't understand that Italy is the seat of the Roman Empire, of Edom, even though Edom is scattered, many other nations today that speak Latin languages, that have something of the Roman Empire, including America. <laughs> they are first. So Edom is everywhere, and the United States of America is also part of Edom. Okay, you get the idea. They they consider the U.S. part of the Europe and the U.S. the Western world, Edom, and they expect it to fall. Okay. Ah oh, man. 
I don't think I can play it. I remember what's in it. I don't think I can play it on here. We're going to have to move over. By the way, I'm going to, uh, I think BitChute streams now, so I'm going to start my uh, BitChute channel. Um, and so I'll be streaming from now on on uh, Rumble, Rockfin, BitChute, and Odyssey. And then we'll pop off of uh, YouTube and I'll start streaming on X as well. So we'll have plenty of platforms for you to pick from uh, for the uncensored content. All right, let's play this video real quick. I am the chosen one. China's made 500 billion dollars. 500 billion. Ripped it out of the United States. And not only that, if you take a look, intellectual property theft. Add that to it. And add a lot of other things to it. So somebody, excuse me, somebody had to do it. I am the chosen one. Somebody had to do it. So I'm taking on China. I'm taking on China on trade. And you know what? We're winning. I mean, bro, like, it's weird. That is weird. Okay, like, why is he looking up at the sky like that and saying that? It's weird. China's made $500 billion. $500 billion. Ripped it out of the United States. And not only that, if you take a look, intellectual property theft. Add that to it. And add a lot of other things to it. So somebody, excuse me, somebody had to do it. I am the chosen one. Somebody had Okay, super weird. Um, we're going to try it. We're going to try it. We're going to try it. Um, let's see. <clears throat> How many people do we have on Rockfin right now? Not many. See, no one's moved over. So, uh, Leah's crying. Let's play this uh, other video real fast. Let's finish this video. I encourage people to move over too because I can't play the video. I think I might. I'll consider. It. I'm gonna listen to it while this other video plays to see if I can play it here. If not, everyone move over to Rumble or Rockfin to hear it to really get the understanding of this. It's, it, Basically, I'm going to show you that they are treating him like he is the Messiah. Their Messiah. That is a big deal. If he is officially recognized as their Messiah, which many of the rabbis have said, oh, he's here. He just hasn't made himself known as the Messiah yet. That is a big deal. It is a very big deal. Mind you, he passed defining anti-Semitism state, uh, Department of State. Go look at it. Easy. So Edom is Christendom. Is Europe? They're finished. Ace of Edom is the implacable enemy enemy of the Jew, and an identifying feature of it is that it's constantly morphing, changing. But it's really the same thing. It only appears different, but it's really that fourth horse that has just many different colors. Of the mark is eagle, and that's really the sign of the Romans and the Russians and the Americans and the Germans, all the evil empires. They all have the same symbol. And it describes then this force that's going to be destroyed like a like a, a marine creature, like a fish. It, it should be stated, I know for most people, they think that the symbol of Christendom is a cross. As it turns out, the symbol of the cross for Christianity, relatively speaking, is rather late. The early and most primitive Christian symbol is the fish because of the acronym of its name. So the fish is the ancient symbol of Christendom. It's really not until you get to the fourth century, until you get to Constantine, does the cross emerge as the chief symbol of the church. And it slithers from one place to another place because Christendom has managed... A reminder, move over to Rockfin or Rumble. Links in the description. Thanks to the mod. Thanks, Jaren, for dropping the link. Dropping the link in the chat right now on YouTube. 
Uh, you can go to rockfin.com slash what's it gets it, rumble.com slash what's it gets it. Move over so we can finish the stream because uh, it's the only way that we can do it. Not just to remain isolated and local to Rome, remain local to Edom in that area, but rather it slithers and emerges in different nations all over the world. And this has to be utterly destroyed because Christendom is the religion of Rome. And the, the, this is written 2000, over 2,000 years ago. And in the future, the sons of Ishmael are future to arouse huge wars all over the world. Now it's going to happen. They're going to go against the entire world, the sons of Edom. And they're going to go and gather war against the rest of the world, the sons of Edom. Okay, so I will, uh, you can go uh, find that on No More News on X. Um, it's this pinned comment. We watched that in our Zionism stream. Uh, our first one, if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to go look at it. And then what I'm going to show you is a couple things I know I can show you here while people move over. Just move over to Rumble Rockfin. Trust me, uh, you want to see what I'm going to show you, and I can't show you here. So let me go to my bookmarks. I have a bookmark on X called Trump Delusion. So funny. All right, check this out. This is the video I want to show you guys, but I'm going to click on this. Okay. Watch this. Okay. Give thanks to Hashem for his work is good, his kindness endures forever. Presented to President Donald J. Trump for his extraordinary and heroic efforts. I like that very much. <laughs> to help the state of Israel and the Jewish people. He and his family should be blessed eternally from the Israel Heritage Foundation, July 10th, 2023. I want to thank you. Okay. That's not just some random weird thing, like who cares? No, 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 that's very, very important. We're about to cover why. That doesn't go to just anyone. Okay, it is well known that is only supposed to be gifted to the Messiah. Okay, so I get that you might love America, you may be like, if Trump's in on it, we're screwed, he's our only hope, I get the whole talking point. I could, I could be Q Austin, just like I can be Glober Austin. I could throw on my MAGA hat, which I refuse to do because MAGA is the top level of satanic priesthood, so why would I put that on my forehead? But I get it. That would actually be like the mark of a satanic priesthood on your forehead. But anyway, um, and if you don't believe me, I'll show you. Just look up MAGA satanic priesthood. The official satanic website will tell you that it's the top level of satanic priesthood. M-A-G-A, -A. probably a coincidence. But I understand. Trust me, I can still man it. I get it. I know that I. this is not fear porn. I'm not saying it's all over. I'm saying he could. He, he's a deception. You should have known when he bragged about being genetically modified. Go to Rockfin, go to Rumble, but I will show you that that right there, he got that award. We've covered uh, the defining anti-Semitism. Who was that pushed by Trump as soon as he came in? Now there are being uh, sp speech laws passed in major or in states in the United States, right? It's been going on for five years uh, about anti-Semitism. Um, so a specific group is has speech laws being passed by them and what are they using for the definition that uh, executive order pushed through by trump um it's called defining anti-semitism you can go to uh, department of state and read it okay so not much more can be covered here i'm gonna be honest i'm sorry um i'm gonna read i'll read the super chest while people move over uh, so thanks to everyone that's helped so far with the goal to get to LA and let's go through them and then we'll just uh, end the YouTube. So if you don't know or you just got here, I have a goal down below uh, for my trip to LA to do the Sam Tripoli podcast. So tinfoil hat podcast with Sam Tripoli. That's on the 17th. I'm going to fly out on the 16th to uh, meet Jaron and everybody. I try to make sure that that happens because it's like perfect alignment. That that's when they're all meeting up for their observations. 
uh, and then so I'll have to fly into LA, drive three hours there, or meet them wherever they are, then drive back, uh, and then the flights are five and a half hours, and then I'll be flying back on the 18th, um, which coincidentally the date the Infowars offered. I'm like, oh man, it's like the walk. Yeah, we gotta figure that out. But so there's gonna be a lot going on back to back to back. Long story short, the that is to help me get out there with the plane ticket, the hotels, the rental car, you know, gas and food or whatever. Um, I can't really do that. So anyone that's uh, wants to help with that, I greatly appreciate it. I think it's going to be really big for True Earth, obviously, me going on there um, and really kind of laying out uh, a lot of the details of True Earth and maybe like uh, misconceptions about gravity, stuff like that. So it should be a very cool conversation. That's what the goal is for. All right, let me come down and read who we have so far. I do. When I found this out about Trump, though, bro, it, it, it kind of blew my mind. Um, so before the stream started, research slash talk about the reptilians. I think it's the same guy that was on Jaren's show, Felix. Um, okay, I looked into it. I will say it does sound crazy to people. There's something more to it than people think. It's also not particularly delivered well, and people jump the gun and say crazy stuff, in my opinion, about it. But um, I'll cover something about it at some point. Thank you for the twenty-five dollars, uh, Glenda Safkin. Thank you for the fifty dollars uh, before the stream started. Towards the um, chat, you must be in the Misswits Telegram. Thank you so much for the support, uh, Dakota Dunn. I'm happy to help out when needed. Very generous hundred dollar tip towards the goal. Thank you so much uh, for the help, brother. Run Boston Bear. Another very generous one hundred dollars. I'm grateful to be able to help get you there so you can shine the light on truth. Yeah, bless. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Run Boston Bear is a legend. Always has my back. Can't thank you enough, brother. Justin Johnson, much appreciate it. Much appreciation and respect. Also, legend, always supporting. You gave all those memberships just for YouTube to come in and then grab them up. But thank you so much for the $20 tip, brother. Much love. Uh, witness, very generous $50 donation with no message. Thank you so much. Uh, Tim, excited for your California trip. Thank you for the $5. And I am as well. I think it's going to be cool. Uh, Sam, thank you for the $50 uh, tip towards the goal. Very generous. No message. Heracles, 2024 is the year. I read that, but I agree. Uh, it's going to be crazy. Uh, and then my boy, Jaren, stoked for you to be on Tinfoil. Hope to see you when you're out here. Uh, yeah, dude, I definitely plan on making that happen. And thank you for the support, my brother. Thank you for donating towards the goal to get me there. Richard B., again, very generous, $200. Have a great time in L.A. Here's a little food money. Much love, to, much love to Kai and fam. Thank you so much, brother, for the very, very generous support. Can't thank you enough. Uh, greatly appreciate it. James, have you seen scenarios for the future of technology and international development? The Rockefeller Foundation. I have not. That's pretty interesting. I will remember to go back and look at that. Thank you for the $25 tip. Much love. James, I think the same... James, may the force be with you. Thank you so much for the forty-four dollar tip. And uh, yeah, 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 I's got my back. Everything's good. And then just anonymous Kofi supporter in a world where in a world where a flat earther is taken seriously because he's so knowledgeable and logical. <laughs> uh, this is Alan Collar tie online. Thank you so much for uh, the kind words and support and for the twenty-five dollar tip, brother. Hey man, I'm new and wanted to donate. I just got curious about FE and it was a serious, I got curious about FE and if it was a serious position or a meme, like I'd always been told and was astonished at how easily you won each debate. I got hooked and I've watched 20 hours of your streams in three days. Keep it up. You're very talented. Thank you so much for the kind words and I love to hear that. That's why I do it. Um, and yeah, it should be pretty telling that the mainstream depiction and representation of quote unquote flat earth is so opposite of what it actually is and how well researched we actually are and how strong the position actually is and that's normally what you have to do uh, when you're threatened by the information alone and if you're threatened by merely information then you're lying right truth is not fear investigation but I'm glad that uh, you found us man you got through the censorship and found us so welcome to the Misswits. Uh, we got a few when I was reading. Congrats to your family expanding. Noel Mallory, thank you so much for the ten dollars. And yeah, dude, we got another little baby coming. Uh, exciting stuff. Thank you so much for the uh, kind words and support. Lord Sackham, uh, hey, my brother would like to take you out for a nice steak dinner when you get to the towns. Um, thank you for the ten dollars. If you're talking about like in Cali, um, 
message me on there or something. I'm sure I'm just going to be super busy, but I'll see what I can do. And then Sean O, looking forward to getting together on the 16th. Nice. You're going to be out there. Then I'm definitely going to try to make it uh, and, and hang out with you guys. Thank you for the $50. Very generous. Uh, and thank you guys for uh, getting me halfway to the goal. So we're halfway there. I know it'll all work out. Um, and thank you guys. We'll read the rest later. We won't keep pausing the stream. That should have given everyone ample opportunity to move off of YouTube. We're going to end the stream now and go over to Rockfin and Rumble only. Links in the description. Uh, last thing I'll say to YouTube, um, is Trump the chosen one? Well, it's kind of a play on the fact that he said that. It's kind of the play, a play on the fact that people actually do treat him like that. And, of course, um, it is chosen one anointed it is what Mashiach means, Moshiach, Mashiach, Messiah in Hebrew. Um, and th little do people know is that people are treating him like he is the Messiah um, for a particular group of people, uh, typically housed in a uh, foreign secular nation state that kind of seems to play puppeteer um, named Israel. And so... It's pretty wild. He's been giving specific awards again, built up by the Rothschilds for an insane deal. Doesn't make any sense unless you were getting something back that's off the books. Uh, he takes, gives a tour in his office and says that's the award he's most proud of. Um, he's gotten the, or the Tree of a Life Award is what I mean. Is it the award he's most proud of? Uh, if you just go look it up, all of his awards, you'll start to see where his allegiance is. He admits and proclaims, in fact, brags about being the most pro-Zionist, pro-Israel uh, president ever um, he just now said that if you're uh, not voting for him and you're a Jew then someone needs to talk to you uh, and that you don't love Israel um, he's actually using the love of is Israel as a given um, as if n not having blind allegiance to the state of Israel is a derogatory uh, you know acknowledgement or something so should speak for itself that he was printed on the Israeli coin next to Cyrus, who declared the building of the temple after he moved the U.S. embassy to Jerusalem for the first time, um, maybe ever or since the 60s. I believe it was in the 60s they gave it right back. Um, you know, they want to, if you know anything about those prophecies over there, they say that they're going to build the third temple, that they're going to start doing animal sacrifices again, that they need a perfect red heifer that's a specific age, um, and that they're going to bring about their Messiah, who will be a political leader that will take over the entire world. That is their prophecy. Uh, the question is, can Trump fulfill that? Well, I mean, really, I think that most people would say no, unless he's genetically, quote unquote, Jewish, but. What's interesting is take it or leave it, not collectivizing, nothing like that. Before we leave off of here, let's make that very clear. The point is that there is a group of people, whether you call them radical or extreme or you don't, I don't care. They believe that their um, ideology and or ethnicity ensures that they will uh, at, at one point in time attain world dominance. Um, and whether that's benevolent, malevolent, whatever, leave it up to the audience. Not the point. The point is that they think that there will be a leader that arises. And he'll be a political leader that takes over the whole world. Uh, and that they will basically be in charge. That is actually just a still man of, a, of the position. Um, and it's interesting to note, of course, this is the guy. He had the most recorded votes of any sitting president ever. Now, let's not even get into everything that happened with all of that or if voting's real or not. Um, we all know that not only is he extremely popular, but but when people like Trump, they like him more than anything. They'll fight to the death for him as if they're his defense attorney. Um, you know, the allegiance to Trump is something that's like akin to nothing I've ever seen. Um, and he straight up looks up and says, I'm the chosen one. I don't know if he's trolling people or feeding into this. He's selling Bibles. It's a whole thing. So. Let's get into what these awards are that he got. What do they mean? What's the significance? What are people saying about him? How does he play into this you know, current geopolitical environment that we find ourselves in, which is very volatile? Um, some would argue prophetic, and some would argue that the prophecies aren't real, but they're being self-fulfilled, regardless of where you stand on that. 
it is clearly directly relevant to what we see going on, directly relevant to what we need to raise awareness about. Because again, collective consciousness and the understanding of um, the situation and knowledge about what's going on in the world is extremely important. If for no other reason other than they have to get people to be compliant. Whether or not they, it's actually like, hey, man, let's count how many um, boxes were checked for this guy. It's the legitimate number. Well, you have to do that. You know, I believe that they're selected, not elected. I believe that the world is a play, and he was written in the script as a hero. That's my position. All that aside, it's very important that we figure out what's going on, put the pieces together. Um, we don't kind of get blindsided by it. People would say, oh, well, he can't be... Uh, the Jewish Messiah, he's not Jewish. Well, first of all, I don't, I've never uh, looked at his DNA. I don't know who his true ancestors all the way back are. I don't even think you can know uh, all of those specifics, and we'll stop there because we're now going to move over to Rockfin and Rumble, and I can't even finish most of my thoughts. I'm tiptoeing, and it's lame. So if you want to support free speech, pop over there. Link's in the description, rockfin.com slash what's gets it, rumble.com slash what's gets it. Uh, shout out to everyone that is here. Sorry that you guys are going to be too lame and not come over if you don't. But shout out to everyone that helped with the um, donation. I'll, I have a lot of stuff going on, but we'll be back doing a stream here soon. So we're going to uh, come over here to end the stream on YouTube. Okay, so what we're going to do as, as I transition over, I'm going to play my In the Field song, but just for a few minutes, not the full song, just to make sure that we're completely off. And then um, we'll actually start talking about uh, what needs to be talked about. So be back in maybe 30 seconds. Uh, and peace out to the YouTube. Seek and speak truth unequivocally in the weak find contempt in the consensus of ignorance. So who cares what other people think? What's true is rarely popular. What's popular is rarely true. Peace.